The design of the Outback combines familiar Subaru traits with that estate car form factor and as a result it's a really effective look in 2022 in my opinion but let me know your thoughts in the comments. We have the Subaru logo prominently displayed on this gloss black and chrome grille. It looks like nothing else out there, very rugged, reinforcing that outdoor appeal. We also have rugged plastic black front bumpers and more chrome strips along the uh, bottom air intake there. LED headlights with adaptive high beam and low beam come as standard, ensuring that you've got maximum visibility for nighttime driving, and that's complemented by the front LED fog lamps too. The side profile exudes a dynamic silhouette thanks to these prominent wheel arch extensions and side skirts, also reinforcing the car's rugged appeal. As standard, you get 18 inch dark gray alloy wheels. In fact, 18 inch is the only size wheels that you can get with the Outback, but I'm fine with that. They do a nice job at absorbing light undulations around town. Body color door mirrors come as standard with built in indicators. They're heated as well. And with top spec touring models, they're also folding when you park and the passenger mirror will tilt down slightly when reversing to help you negotiate out of that tight gap. Well, I found an umbrella, so let's keep going. I uh, really like the design of this muscular rear and chunky LED taillights merging out from the sides here and working their way across the tailgate. Quite a prominent roof spoiler, and that's further complemented by more plastic use for the rear bumper. It's a nice effect. You get an automatic tailgate with field and towing models, making that fly open automatically, and once it's done so, you'll awarded with 561 litres of space here. There's quite a few practicality features in the back of this space here. Lots of hooks dotted around to attach objects to the floor. To the right hand side of me we've got a netted compartment perfect for objects like to roll around. Got a 12 volt socket there as well. There's a very generous amount of underfloor storage. If you lift that up you're awarded with a couple of compartments. Plenty of room there for shopping bags, dog walking bits and bobs. Yeah, very versatile and practical. To fit all your outdoor stuff in the back here, you may need to fold down the rear seats and we can do just by toggling the levers. To either side there, the seats will then fold down in a 60-40 arrangement, awarding you with 1,822 litres in total. But bear in mind, that's gonna be 70 litres less if you've opted for the sunroof like we have. The Outback has a brake towing capacity of 2,000 kilograms, one of the best capacities offered from a vehicle of this class, making it very convenient to tow a large trailer or small caravan. Okay guys, Subaru has kept the powertrain lineup for the Outback nice and simple. There's just a single engine option here as the two litre diesel has been completely dropped from the lineup now. What we have under the bonnet then is the 2.5i Boxer. That comprises a four cylinder petrol engine Engine, mated to CVT automatic transmission. An eight speed manual mode can be activated by the paddle shifters behind the steering wheel. Subaru claims improvements made to the chassis and suspension have optimized handling performance and ride comfort, but sadly, the excellent ground clearance that the Outback delivers to tackle any kind of off-road terrain compromises ride quality on normal roads. I really like the weight applied to the steering. It's light, but it's not too light, providing a good amount of feel from the wheels. That makes this rather long SUV quite easy to maneuver around town, especially into an out of tight parking spaces. Subaru claims its revised configuration has helped reduce noise and vibration inside the cabin, but it's not kept to an absolute minimum, unfortunately. Those 18 inch wheels do a pretty nice job at preventing excessive road noise from seeping inside. The main issue for me comes with the engine under harsh acceleration and at lower revs it sounds quite unpleasant and coarse at times and that start stop system while brilliantly implemented does sound rather abrupt disrupting any kind of relaxing experience that you had going on there is some wind noise coming from around the mirrors and the windscreen at higher speeds too. The Outback offers excellent visibility thanks to a high riding position, thin side pillars that don't obscure your view that much at junctions and traffic lights, large mirrors that can have blind spot monitoring integrated to alert your vehicles passing close by, and a great over the shoulder view thanks to lots of rear quarter glass eliminating where blind spots would otherwise be. Plus the view out the back window is pretty good for car that combines estate and SUV body styles. 
I'm really impressed with the material quality inside the new Outback. While it's not as showy as equivalent rivals, indeed a lot of the materials present here are quite familiar, they're used to great effect. The front space is wide, giving you plenty of room to stretch out and find a comfortable driving position. Headroom's great, that's despite getting the power operated sunroof that's available with top spec touring models. Legroom's pretty good as well because the driver's seat is eight way electrically adjustable as standard, plus you get lumbar support that allows six footers to easily find a comfortable position that suits them whether that's a lofty view of the road ahead or they like a more engaging drive by sitting down low that is certainly an option there my only complaint is with the rear view mirror that's mounted quite low down on the windscreen it's practically in my face obscuring a little bit of my view of the left hand side there but over the last model the windshield has been extended slightly and so have the front windows making it feel a little bit more breathable and less claustrophobic than its predecessor. As standard, you get a leather wrapped steering wheel, which feels nice and grippy, adding to that premium nature of the cabin. And I also like the gray stitching running along the inside. Behind the wheel, we have a tiny five inch or so display housed between traditional speedometer and rev counter dials. This is complemented by Subaru's new infotainment setup. I'm really impressed with what Subaru have done here. The icons are nice and large, so they're really easy to see while on the go. And and it's pretty responsive too, which means you won't find yourself faffing around too much while on the move. Working our way down, we have an AUX port and a couple of USB ports accompanied by the electronic parking brake. A couple of cup holders, really nice size to these. You can fit pretty much any kind of bottle in there, especially my bulky one fits nice and snug. We'll open up the centre compartment here and you've got a tray there for loose change and pieces of gum. Pull that up and we've got a nice deep cavernous central compartment there. It goes down really far, perfect for odd bits and bobs. But sadly there's nothing else in there, no additional USB port or 12 volt socket. And the door bins are an okay size. The plastic used for these are pretty cheap, which actually works out quite well because they're pretty flimsy. So you can easily shove in a bulky bottle like this. The longer wheelbase than the previous model has enhanced rear passenger space to a great degree. Indeed, there's plenty of room at the back here for two adults or three kids. Unlike a lot of rivals, the rear seats can recline, extending headroom slightly for six footers and making those seats a little bit more comfortable for longer journeys. You also get a middle compartment here that you can fold down, rewarding you with a generously sized central armrest and a couple of cup holders, though these are fairly small. Not enough space for my bulky bottle. If you need to load kids or elderly passengers into the back then you'll be pleased to know that the doors open nice and wide around 65 to 70 degrees. Thanks to the high roof line and low loading seals elderly passengers will easily be able to hop into the back here. You can also then attach kids seats to Isofix fittings on either bench. Okay let's check out the middle seat. You know what, comfort wise, that's actually pretty good. It's not as plush and supportive as the other seats, but I could sit here for about an hour or so, I think. Leg room is slightly compromised, well, I say slightly, but other than that, not too bad at all. Okay guys, should you buy, lease or finance a Subaru Outback? Well, after my test drive, I have to say that I feel that this is a rather underappreciated offering in the SUV segment. Not only does it deliver true off-road capability, excellent stability and traction control on various terrain types, but it has a lot of things that family car buyers are looking for too. For me, the downsides factor into the driving experience. That excellent ground clearance compromises ride comfort, meaning this isn't as relaxing to drive as other family SUVs out there. The engine also feels a bit underpowered and those fuel economy figures simply aren't good enough. They're quite poor and it could be more confident when handling sharp bends and corners. It's certainly not the most engaging motor out there. But overall, I've been pleasantly surprised by the Outback. I think it's a fantastic offering in this segment and it's definitely worth adding to your list. If this review has got you interested in the Outback guys and you have a few questions, then be sure to give our team a call via the number in the banner below. We'd be happy to provide any information that you need. Alternatively, just click the pop-up banner up there to book a consultation call at a time that best works for you. Also, there's a link down below in the description. If you click that, you can head over to the O3 website and check out the latest offers that we have available on this capable off-road SUV. But that's it. I'm going to get out of the rain now. See you next time. Safe driving.